In today's video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a simple drag and drop mobile app game in Adobe Flash. Basically called Monster Maker, and what you have to do is press on the play button with your finger, which will then take you to the game. And in our game, what we can do is drag and drop different elements onto our page to make different monsters. Okay, so you can get different faces for your monster by simply picking up different facial features and dropping them on your page. Okay, so a fairly simple one. It's going to get you used to using those drag and drop functions in Flash. So let's head over now to Flash and we're going to make ourselves a brand new Air for Android file. Once you're in that Air for Android file, head straight over to your properties panel, set the size to 1080 by 1920 pixels. That puts it in full high definition. Okay, after that I just want you to change your stage colour to a nice light blue that represents the sky. Okay, we're going to draw a background onto this layer first of all. So let's rename layer 1 in our box over there to background. Okay. So the first thing I want to add onto this background besides the blue canvas is a mountain. Okay, so I'm going to grab my pen tool. You don't have to use the pen tool if you'd rather use the paintbrush or one of the shape tools, feel free to use that. But I'm going to use the pen tool with a black stroke, no fill colour. I'm going to click about halfway up, right on the edge, the left edge of my page there. When I click once, I'm going to go over to the right edge, straight across, and then click and drag down. And you'll see a curve start to appear in my line. So I'm just going to make the shape of a mountain and let go of my mouse. From here I'm going to hold the ALT key on my keyboard and click on this corner and drag that handle so it points straight down level with my stage. That just tells Flash that I want that line to go straight down next of all. So I'm going to go right to the corner of my stage and just click and you'll see that a line has appeared straight down the edge of my stage. I'm going to go then go across to the left hand corner and click once and then go straight back to my starting point and click again and that's going to close my shape in which means I can now grab my fill bucket grab a greenish colour and colour that mountain in okay, that's a pretty nice looking backdrop if you want to add the sun and some clouds and things like that in there feel free to but I think it'll be a little bit too cluttered if I add all those things into my app so I'll leave it simple with just a background like that if you want you can also click on those um, black stroke lines with your black arrow and delete those. They don't need to stay there. It's up to you if you want to keep them. After that, I am going to grab the text tool. I'm just going to select white as my colour for now. I want my font to be Roboto. That font's been especially designed um, for Android apps. Okay, so pick Roboto as your font if you've got it installed on your computer. It's really simple to read on mobile devices. The style we want to use is black, so it's nice and thick, and it's really going to stand out. In capital letters, I'm going to write Monster, and then on the next line, I'll write Maker. It's a little bit small at size 96, so I'll use the free transform tool below my black arrow to hold shift and stretch it out a bit, so it's going to fill up a good chunk of that sky in my app. I'll just move it around until it's roughly in the center. And from there, I can double click on words and I might even change the colour of them to make them a little bit more exciting. So I'm going to have a light pink and a light yellow. And I might also grab my black arrow and while I've clicked on the text I'll go down to my filters and put a drop shadow in. That'll just help that text stand out from the background a little bit. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Uh, the next thing I might add to this background is the monster that we drew in the previous tutorial. So in the previous tutorial, you would have traced a monster that looks something like this little fella. Okay. What I want you to make sure when you copy and paste him into this app is that you've got rid of his eye and his mouth. We just want to have his body. Okay, and that should be a symbol. So let's just pick that up from our library, drag it and drop it onto our page. And there's our little monster. Okay, I'll just position him roughly in the center there by nudging him around with my arrow keys. Doesn't look too bad. Now, you also notice in my library over here, I've gone and drawn a few other bits and pieces. I've got eyes, 
teeth, different smiles, noses. Okay, you'll need to start drawing some of these pieces and putting them into your library as well. The way you draw them is just go up to insert and make yourself a new symbol. So if you want to draw a mouth, oops, you just write mouth and make it a movie clip and click OK and a box will come up and allow you to draw your mouth in there. Okay, so if I just grab this circle tool quickly, I might grab a reddish colour and I'll draw a big circle like that over the page. I could grab the line tool next and maybe draw some fangs in. I'll colour those white. And there's another mouth. Looks a bit dodgy, so I didn't really take my time, but if I click back, go to my library, there's that mouth I just drew. And that's easy to drag and drop out onto my monster. So what I'm going to do now is drag out some things I've created. So I've got that mouth. I might get some eyes. Um, there's some normal looking eyes, so I'll bring those out. And we'll put a hairy nose on him. Okay. They are a little bit small at the moment, I think, so I might just click on my mouth and use the free transform tool there while holding shift whoops, and dragging from a corner to give it a bit of a resize. Same with the nose. We don't want to get too much bigger in the eyes, it would probably pop out a little bit as well. Okay, it looks a little bit silly, but that's what our monster's going to look like for now. Okay, that's basically our background done for the home page, so I might lock that into place. And I'm going to make a new layer and I'm going to call this layer button. Just below the monster, we're going to have a button that says play. So when we press on the play button, it takes us to our actual game. So in my properties, I'm going to pick up the oval tool. Choose a black stroke and a color for my button. So I'm just going to choose a light orange. And I'm just going to draw a button in the shape of an oval down here that looks something like that. Using my black arrow, I'll just click on the button layer so it is all selected. Go up to modify and then convert that to a symbol. I'll just call it play and make it a button. Click OK. Now because we're going to put some action script or some code onto this button to make it do something a little bit later on, we need to give it an instance name. You can't use the word play for this, so what I'm going to use instead is the word play then underscore btn. That stands for play button. Okay, and that's going to be the name of this instance. Okay, that looks good. Now to make this look a bit more like a button, I'm going to double click on it to go into isolation mode. And you'll see that our timeline has changed, and we can just work with this button now. What I'm going to do is grab the text tool, use white text, and just write the word play in capital letters across that button. And using the black arrow, I'll just move that into the center of the button. I might even make that text a little bit bigger. Use your arrow keys to give it a bit of a nudge. That looks good. Okay, now you can see in our timeline we've got four different states that our button can be in. The up state is when our button's just sitting on the page doing nothing. The down state is the other one I want to change today. And the down state is when we press down on that button. We can make it look a little bit different. So it looks like a rollover effect. So let's click in this box just below the down state and press F6 on your keyboard. And that's going to insert a little dot, which is the keyframe. Just click off everything for a minute and then click back on the orange part of the button. And you can change that color. I'm just going to choose a purpley color for this. So now in our down state, when we press down on that button with our finger, it's going to turn purple. But while our button's just sitting there doing nothing on the up state, it's going to be orange. So up is orange, down will be purple. That's a pretty good looking button now. The last thing we'll have to do is add some code onto that button, but we're not going to do that just yet. Okay, we'll come back to that a little bit later in the tutorial. So I'm going to lock that layer for now. And now we're going to start building in a new scene where we start to make our game. So I'm going to go up to the insert menu here and I'm going to insert a new scene. Okay, if you go to your window menu and select scene, you can see your two different scenes. Okay, 
and it's good to give them names. I've already called my first one intro, so just double click on it called intro, because that's the introductory scene for my app. And the next one I'm going to call gain. Oops. So I've got two scenes in my animation now, so the intro and the gain. And in the game we want it to look fairly sim similar to this home screen. So what I'm going to do is unlock the background for a moment and just click on the word background. That's going to highlight my background layer. I'm going to go up to edit and copy. And using my little movie clapper thing up here, I'm going to go to game, go to edit and paste in place. And that basically puts in a few bits and pieces that we're going to need to make our game. So from here, Okay, I might just, oh, no, I'll leave the text how it is, it doesn't really need to change. I'm going to leave my little monster how he is. So I might just call this background again. One thing I am going to do though, is delete the eyes, the nose and the mouth. Okay, so that's what our background is going to look like. They're not going to move, so I'm going to lock that into place. On the next layer, I'm going to write facial features. So I want to new layer, goes above the background, we'll call it facial features. And this is where you bring out all these elements from your library that you've drawn before, and you drop them onto your stage. Try and keep them in some sort of order, so all the mouth elements go together, noses stay together, and the eyes stay together. So now we've got them all out now, and there's the last smile, so I'll just drag that on. I might even put some of these elements onto the monster already. So he's a bit dressed up. Okay, and then we'll just have these other elements floating around down the bottom. What I might actually do is move them up a little bit. might put some instructions at the bottom that tells people how to use this game. So we might have to... Just give our monster and some of these facial features a bit of a nudge up. Okay, that gives us a little bit of room at the bottom now to, oops, to write in some text. So the facial features layer looks good there. I might just lock that for the minute. And back on my background layer, I'm going to add some text in. I'll just use black for the text and I'm going to change it from Roboto Black to Roboto Regular. So drag and drop different facial features onto the monster. Obviously my text too big so I'll make that a lot smaller so it's going to fit on my page. Might look small on my computer screen but trust me that's going to be easily readable on the mobile app. So I'll just move that in nice and small down the bottom. Drag and drop different facial features onto the monster. So we've got some instructions there now for our little game. So I'll lock that background again. I might unlock facial features now. And what we're going to do is start to put some code on these facial features to make them work. So Flash will recognize when we touch these facial features we're able to drag them around our page. So I'm going to start with this big eye up here. Remember, if you want to code something or put some action script on it, we need to give it an instance name first. So I'll call this one Big Eye. I'll call this one Green Nose. I might put an underscore between these two words. You can't have any spaces in your instance name, so you've got to put an underscore. I'll just write Smiley. Call these Yellow Eyes Lady Eyes. The next lot of eyes look pretty normal, so we'll call those normal eyes. We've got an orange nose. We've got a hairy nose. Uh, we've got a pink mouth. And finally, we've got some fangs there. I might just call it fangs. Okay, so all these little features we want to drag and drop now have got an instance name. That means we're ready to put some action script on them or some code to make them actually work. So what I'm going to do is start with the top one so I don't get confused. I'll click on that once. And I'll go to my window menu and select code snippets. I'm going to let Flash do all the coding for us. In action script, 
we're going to go to actions and simply double click on drag and drop and you can see in your actions panel now some code has been added in to make your little eye work so when we pick up that eye what we're able to do is start dragging it around the page there's the code for that there and then if we let go of that object we basically stop dragging it around okay so flash has put in the code for us we just now need to do that for every feature on our page so click on the next bit the nose and put the drag and drop on do the mouth drag and drop so you can fast forward the video for a sec I'll just take a minute to get all the code onto these different pieces alright so that's good that's got all our little um, facial features working I'd say one thing I need to do in this actions panel if you can't see that actions panel just go to your window and select actions so you can see it on frame number one we need to put in some code Okay, we need to write the word stop we need to open and close a bracket and then put a semicolon okay, so just that piece of code there that basically says when our game goes from the first scene and comes into our game it needs to stop right there and not go any further okay so that's what that code does so that is basically our second scene or our game scene all finished so I'm going to lock everything there just go back to the intro scene for a moment just so we can finish that off as well there's a little bit of code we need to add onto that and that's to make this button work okay so what we might do is click on this button oh, sorry we'll need to unlock it first so we'll click on that button it's already got the instance name which is good so we can go back to our code snippets and we're going to go down and well, actually we'll close the action and go to timeline navigation we simply want to find this one click to go to next scene and play so we double click that that code basically says when we push this button take us to the next scene okay fairly simple one final piece of code we do need to add to this is back in line number one and that's the stop code as well so when this app loads up we don't want it to go straight into our game we want it to stop first of all so people can read the name of the game and then they have to push play to get the game working so that's basically it okay this is ready for publishing now so the first thing I'm going to do is just save that into my account then I'm going to go across to my publish settings in my properties panel okay, I'm just going to make sure flash is checked nothing else should be checked there and my output file called monster maker it looks good I'm going to go up to the target here and go to my player settings and make sure my output file has a good name it should all be called Monster Maker really, so as long as those three say Monster Maker, we're laughing. It should be in portrait format and it should be full screen. Okay, we'll go across to the deployment. If you haven't made a digital certificate to publish your app, just create one now. If you've already got a certificate, just browse for where it is saved on your computer and type in your password. Okay, just embed the air runtime with that application. If you created an icon for this app, feel free to put it in. The 96 by 96 icon is probably a good size to make if you are going to make one, which I would like you to do for this tutorial if you do get time. Just make it in Fireworks or Photoshop. When you're done, click on OK. Click on OK. From here, we'll just go up to File and Save, if you haven't done so already, and then File and Publish. Okay, so what Flash will do now is package your app together and get it ready to be put onto an Android device. It will just take a moment to do that, depending on how quick your computer is. Once it's all packaged up, we can copy the file onto our mobile device, and then we can test our app out. So I'll just plug my Android device in now. Okay, there it is there. I'll go onto my phone, into my documents, and when my app's ready, I'll be able to copy that across. So it should be almost finished publishing now. Yep, there we go. So it says it was packaged successfully. We'll click OK. And we'll go into the folder where that would have saved. And there it is right there, the monster.apk. Looking for that APK file. So what we're going to do is copy that. I'll just go across to my phone and I will paste that on. 
So I've already got a test file on there, so I'll just replace that one with my new one. It's called Monster Maker. Okay, so what I'll do now is just load up my camera on my computer here so you can see what happens when I test this app out. Okay, so here is my phone, and basically, if I can get this in some sort of focus, we're looking for My Files, so I'll click on My Files. In there, we're looking for Device Storage, so if I can bring this in, there's Device Storage. We'll go into Documents, and at the top you can see the Monster Maker app, so I'll click on that. Ask us if we want to install it. Yes, we do, so we'll click Install. That'll take a few seconds just to install onto the phone. Okay, it's installed, so down the bottom we can click on Open. Okay, it's a bit bright, but up comes our Monster Maker app. Okay, if we press play, we've got the elements at the bottom there that we can simply pick up and drag around. Okay, so I'll Rearrange this monster's face quickly so you get the idea of how it's working. Okay, that doesn't look too bad. Okay, it seems like everything's working as intended. So it's just a simple drag and drop game. Young kids might like to play this. Okay, I'll get them get them using mobile devices and get them using this drag and drop feature. Okay, so I'll close that off now. And that's basically all you need to do to complete your app. So save it up and there's your app finished.